Galatians 6 6 1 Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. So we are to help one another when it comes to somebody falling in sin. It says fault, but it's the same thing as a sin. Just like the words error, bad, wrong. Are they all meaning wrong and an error? Yes. But we are to remain distant and a point and conscious or else we might fall as well. And yes it is true to bear one another's burdens. But we are only to bear that burden until it becomes a weight and we have to lay aside every weight that does beset us. 6 to 2 bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. This is the only time when the phrase law of Christ appears in Scripture. I could go into a long refutation on why the law of Christ does not do away with the commandments that still apply today. But just to save space and time, see my article entitled Law of Christ in my group called Biblical Truth and Reality. 6 to 3 to 5 for if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. So we are not to be arrogant big shots and think we are hot stuff just because we have an education or we know a little bit of Bible. We all must prove our own work and study to be quiet and do our own business. As one gentleman said to me one time, keep your eyes on your own house. Know what I mean jelly bin? 6-6 six six Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. This is interesting because we that are taught in the word, by the Holy Spirit, see that passage in 1 John 2 that says we do not need any man to teach us, isn't the law good and holy? If it is, then according to Philippians 4 8 we are to think on those things and keep the commandments that have not changed. Man, people like the Baptist circles have a time of it and throw a fit when you mention this. 6 to 7 to 8 Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Whatsoever means whatsoever. Get it? From the previous verses mentioned and explained above, that if you sow lawlessness, refusing the Ten Commandments and dietary laws as having to be kept, you're going to reap lawlessness. Eating whatever you want, breaking the Sabbath whenever you want, endorsing pagan holidays, etc. Verse 8 explains further. If we sow to the flesh, breaking the commandments that still apply mentioned above, we are going to reap corruption. But if we sow to the Spirit, the all good things from verse 6, then we shall have life everlasting. Guess what? If you don't communicate in all good things, since the law is good we must keep the commandments, then you are not going to reap life everlasting. You will be turned away from God and tossed into hell and then the lake of fire, faster than you can say all the books of the Bible three times. How do you like that for advanced revelation in the King James perfected text? 6-9 And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. Isn't this interesting that we just talked about in the last couple verses about sowing and reaping? We should not be weary because in due season we shall reap, life everlasting, context, if we faint not. Didn't Jesus talk about enduring until the end that those people shall be saved? Did you ever read the parable of the sower and the seed? Paul really likes to follow the words and teachings of Jesus Christ, doesn't he? And people say that Paul taught a different gospel than Jesus Christ. Go stick your head in a bucket of ice water three times and pull it out twice and that goes for your pastors, preachers, and and anybody else who preaches this multiple gospel garbage. 6.10 As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Wow there's the word good again. Paul Shaw likes to talk about good things, Philippians 4.8, doesn't he? In context of what the verses just explained and also what other scripture teaches, then the law is one of those good things of commandments not changed. So here we have two kinds of good to accomplish and do, 1. Do good unto all men, what Jesus talk about loving your enemies in Matthew 5. 2. Them who are of the household of faith. Those that are brethren. Obviously exercise the basic civility as you would towards your enemies. 
but also encourage them to do the good things, commandments not changed from the law. 6.11 Ye see how large a letter I have written unto you with mine own hand. I have heard some weird conclusions about this verse. People stating that Paul was blind or that he couldn't see well. How large a letter I have written has to do with the length of the letter. Not his individual eyesight. Suppose one of the people who created the Titanic stated to the press, how large a boat I have made. Is he referring to his eyesight? Or is he referring to the size of the ship? The answer is obvious with anyone with a low IQ of 60 and has logical sense. Some people have stated that Paul never wrote any of his own letters. That he always had somebody else write them for him. I have written unto you with mine own hand. I guess you would have to say that Paul was a stupid liar. I don't think so. People need to learn to read better before they make accusations and false conclusions. 6.12 As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. As explained in previous chapters, this was the problem he had with Judaizers in Acts 15. They were trying to put people back under the bondage of the law connected to the Levitical priesthood. But then if they suffer persecution for the cause of Christ, then they would probably drop it and not make it an issue. This is the bold reason why they want to constrain people to go back under the bondage of the law, so they can showboat and brag on their accomplishments and achievements. Jesus Christ talked about this and Matthew chapters 5 to 7. 6 13 For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. Paul explains further here that they don't even keep the law themselves that they want to put you back under. The same hypocrisy issue Paul had with Peter in Galatians 2. But they only want to tell you what to do so they can brag. But they don't want anybody telling them where their faults are. This is a big problem in both modern apostate Christianity and Judaism movements, including Hebrew Roots Movement. 6.14 But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. The cause of Christ is the most important thing of all. Basically the same theme in the Old Testament. Consisted under the two greatest commandments Christ was asked about. Loving God with all of your heart and loving your neighbor as yourself. Under those two hang all the law and the prophets. So the laws that still apply, ten commandments and dietary laws, then we can only keep them through Jesus Christ as being the door, the good shepherd, the way, the truth, and the life. That is why we only glory in Jesus Christ. For Jesus Christ himself even said that without him we can do nothing. But with God all things are possible. And since he is God in the flesh, the image of the invisible God, Colossians 1, then we must go through him. 6.15 For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. What? Paul what are you saying? Are you crazy? You're really going to command against Torah? Paul addressed those who want to boast and glory in their sinful flesh. These Jews constrain others to be circumcised just to make themselves look good. Paul makes a statement that circumcision and uncircumcision avails nothing, but a new creature, verses 15. That's interesting. For creature see 2 Corinthians 5 17, 1 Tim. 4 4, Hebrews 4 13, Jas. 1 18, Revelation 5 13. For availeth see Esther 5 13, Galatians 5 6, 6 15, Jas. 5 16. Avail, Webster's 1828, 1. To profit oneself, to turn to advantage. To be strong or able, to profit, to be a force or authority. 2. To assist or profit, to affect the object, or bring to a successful issue. If that's the definition of avail, then Paul is simply stating that circumcision is of no success, profit, of force or authority, or benefit to us. Question, if circumcision is still as commandment, why would Paul make such a statement? He clearly contradicted what God commanded to Abraham in Genesis. Please don't give me this translation error garbage. You know that's what Paul said because he wrote it. The question is, do you believe what he wrote or not? 
6.16 And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. What rule is he talking about? He just stated that circumcision means nothing, whether you are or not. But a new creature. Is that a coincidence that if anybody is in Christ he is a new creature? The modern corrupted version state creation. That's not accurate because creation has to do with the finished product. See my article about being born again. Do you know why people don't have peace in their life, especially Israel of today? Because they are tied down to the curses of the law that was fulfilled. They rejected the Messiah and are so tied down to these old duties and rules. It's no wonder why they are blind and cannot accept the Messiah. 6.17-18 From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Paul set the example. Do not let anybody trouble you with such circumcision rule nonsense. Which if you're not circumcised in the flesh, you cannot partake of Passover. So he write as a side note, he is speaking against keeping the feast days. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. The grace of Jesus Christ is with our spirit. Not Judaism and their rules and regulations. Here's the final chapter commentary for this book. I hope you have enjoyed the series. Feel free to copy and share all the chapters and send them to other people to help them.